What's up guys? Today's topic is the ketogenic diet. All right, I know that's not a supplement, but it's getting really popular or it's been getting really popular and there's still a lot of confusion surrounding the ketogenic diet. So I'm gonna discuss that today. Disclaimer, I'm not a researcher of the ketogenic diet. I'm not an expert of the ketogenic diet. I just know more than the average Joe. So I'm gonna try to explain it. I'm gonna try to keep this under five minutes. I already made this video. It was about 15 minutes long. You guys don't have an attention span of 15 minutes. I don't have an attention span of 15 minutes. Nobody does. So I'm gonna try to keep it under five minutes. That means I'm gonna have to leave some things out. So if you're like, oh, hey, what about this? Or, oh, hey, you left that out. I'm sorry. It's gonna be under five minutes. I gotta leave some things out. I'll leave links to all the references or all the studies that I reference in the description, as well as I'm using this textbook right here, Nutritional Biochemistry. Great read. I sound like such a nerd, but that's okay. Let's get into the ketogenic diet. I'm gonna start big, work my way down. Ketogenic. It's basically ketogenesis, okay? We're trying to generate ketone bodies to get into a state of ketosis where we then break down those ketone bodies primarily for energy rather than glucose. So it's a very, very low carbohydrate, high fat, moderate protein diet. It needs to be moderate protein to truly get in a state of ketosis or else our body can readily go through gluconeogenesis to convert those proteins into glucose. That happens, we can't get into ketosis. We need to rely on ketones, right, rather than glucose. It's very high fat, low glucose because glucose affects what's called the glucagon insulin ratio. When we have high levels of glucagon, we phosphorylate a bunch of different things. We go through all these phosphorylation reactions. One of the most important things being hormone-sensitive lipase. Hormone-sensitive lipase it was responsible, is responsible for hydrolyzing triglycerides into free fatty acids so that we can burn them for energy or break them down and turn them into ketone bodies. So when insulin levels are high, AKA when you eat glucose, insulin spikes, you have lipoprotein lipase, which is then elevated. That's the opposite of hormone-sensitive lipase. It takes free fatty acids, packs them into triglycerides, and puts them back into adipose tissue, okay? LPL acts solely in adipose tissue, right? So basically, you're trying to make that paradigm switch of enzymes to elevate hormone-sensitive lipase rather than lipoprotein lipase so that you can break down more fat, liberate more of those triglycerides, and produce as many ketone bodies as possible. There's a number of things people will ask about, well, hold on, high fat, I thought that basically gives you heart disease. And that's not true, okay? We pretty much have disproved that hypothesis, the lipid hypothesis, Ansel Keys, all of that stuff, blah, 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 tons of other researchers too, not just him. Then the other side of that is people are like, oh, what about diabetic ketoacidosis? Diabetic ketoacidosis. There's a reason it's called diabetic ketoacidosis. It's 80% of the people or cases that get ketoacidosis are diabetic. That's because it's usually a criteria of it is extremely high blood glucose levels. A healthy individual has properly functioning insulin, so no insulin resistance like in type 2 diabetes, and their beta cells function properly. Where in type 1 diabetes, they do not. So you have fine glucose clearance, right? Your body can clear glucose from the blood, meaning it's very hard for you to experience ketoacidosis. If you do as a non-diabetic individual, usually you have a poor diet or the studies have found that these people have poor diets. They don't exercise. They just live unhealthy lifestyles. You can experience ketoacidosis. Why ketones are very acidic. They have very low pHs. They're beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetone, and acetoacetate. Acetone is basically what's in nail polish remover. So it's a very low pH, but that doesn't mean just because you have ketone bodies present that your blood is going to dip to dangerous levels and you're going to be in trouble. No, our body is constantly producing ketone bodies. It's just whether or not we're breaking them down, right? Because it is a source of energy. Our body can use it for energy. So people like to go on this diet because when you consume glucose, there's basically four fates, right? It can go through glycolysis and give energy immediately. It can be stored as glycogen. It can go to the brain to be used as fuel, go through the pentose phosphate pathway for NADPH production so that it can then be stored as fat, right? We also know that when it spikes insulin, the LPL goes up. It preferentially wants to be stored as fat. Insulin tells your body to store everything to build things, right? And it doesn't discriminate against anything. Fat tissue, muscle tissue tells everything to grow. So if you have glycogen stores that are already full, if you're not exercising, the glycolytic pathway is active, but just not really active. So when you consume glucose, it doesn't go into muscle glycogen or liver glycogen. It doesn't necessarily go through glycolysis. So your body's going to store it as fat, or it's going to go through the pentose phosphate pathway to produce ribose or NADPH, which will then help store it as fat or ribose for DNA synthesis. That's why people won't necessarily eat glucose. If you're an active individual, ketogenic diet is not for you. Your body wants glycogen. You want glucose. That's what's going to fuel your exercise, right? So that's the ketogenic diet in under five minutes. I'm at 455. I kind of had an introduction. I'm also closing the video. I left a lot of things out, okay? There's so many things you can talk about. We can talk about peroxisome proliferator activated receptor alpha, which is a translational 
a receptor that's responsible for gene expression, okay, that then completely shifts the way that your metabolism is functioning, those energy pathways. So hopefully this cleared up the ketogenic diet. That was a lot of information. I just confused myself, but I think watching this video will help. If you guys have any questions on any diets specifically or supplements, please comment them down below because it helps me come up with videos, uh, ideas for videos, even though I can come up with them on my own. I like to answer your questions. So hopefully this helped you. If you have any questions, you know, in the comments, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next video.